Release the hound. <laughs> Just want to watch the world burn. You're listening to The Hounds of Diana, brought to you by 24-7 World Radio. I am your host, Harrison Katz. Good evening, everyone. It is June 20th, 2022. Thank you, everybody, for joining me this evening. Tonight's scripture reading, I'll be reading from the Old Testament, Book of Malachi, Short verse, chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen and hallelujah. Now, I just want to pause just right here for a second, guys. Tonight's going to be a little bit of a different kind of broadcast. I'm a I got some things I'm going to read, but I'm also going to spend some time ranting because I think it needs to be done. Now, concerning this verse here in Malachi 3 6, we see, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The sons of Jacob, that is the tribes of Israel, right? The sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Jews. The Jews are a race of people, much like you could say a any sort of race of people who have their own language, their own country, uh, culture, and their own boundaries, geographic boundaries. So the Jews are a race of people. So what's up with everybody trying to blame all Jews in general. Now, I again, I agree with the common day uh, understanding where, you know, you might hear in some kind of a, a, a academic setting that ignorance breeds racism. And I, in fact, agree with that point. Because most of you people who try to blame the Jews in general, you're nothing more than being hatefully racist. And that's just the truth. The fact that you think a whole race of people are one way or are have all of them are evil and all share that same kind of characteristic, that by definition is hateful racism. Now Let's look on the other end of that spectrum. So you have everybody, all these people coming out more and more, blaming the Jews for the woes of the world. And then you have men like myself, men like Brother Eric Rodriguez, Brother Eric Phelps, um, uh, Brother Nico, Brother Vlad, others on this radio station and others online who say, no, 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 it's not the Jews, it's the Jesuits. But what's the big difference? Well... The Jesuits are not a race of people. You have to understand, they are an org, highly, highly organized military company in the guise of a religious order. All right? Every Jesuit gets trained the same way. Can you say that about every Jew? Every Jesuit, every single Jesuit, that passes through that novitiate door gets instilled with the same absolute obedience to his superior, goes through all the same spiritual exercises, which is really mind control, hypnosis, trance meditation. And once they're good and indoctrinated with these, uh, this quote-unquote Ignatian spirituality, then they're able to be sent out on their various missions that their order has for them. The Jews aren't as nearly as organized. And the fact that you can make the comparison between <laughs> these two groups of people, one 
a race of of men women and children the jews the second the society of jesus the jesuits who in itself is a well-oiled machine all right with a superior general at the top which today is arturo sosa who is the mind of every single obedient jesuit in the order it's a hive mind mentality the jews is not that way so let's move on from that verse there in malachi 3. it's just you these kind of things have to be discussed openly and we have to be able to have some honest and logical dialogue about this kind of stuff guys because the more and more you you dig through the recesses of the internet you find that this theme of bashing the jews is becoming more and more popular it's pretty much like a catch-all to where you know people used to you know used to be used to be the masons quote unquote the illuminati and now uh, more and more people are moving into the camp to know it's the jews and as that continues on you just wait because you are asking for the judgment of god in your life and in this country once you start doing that So people really don't understand the, who the, the Jesuits are, what they're about, and it's really sad because many people who are in this, let's say it, re, let's say field of research, let's call us our, us, ourselves uh, truthers, truth seekers, right? I remember when I first started looking into many of these things and scrolling through the internet this is way before i got on youtube or yeah anything like that it was it was reading books it was f trying to find books that would talk about conspiracies and give facts and such and such and i remember one of the first books that i came across and read in this field was the classic by the late great william cooper his book published in 1990 titled behold a pale horse now this i think you can even find a paperback copy of this at like barnes and noble they are still selling copies of this it is all over the internet and there's no reason why people should not have a copy and not be familiar with it and the reason why I bring it up, because I was just going through this book, just looking f for for one specific detail. And I, just like I always do, I got caught reading a couple of chapter here, a couple of chapters there. And before you knew it, I was reading the whole thing over again. And I'm reminded how much the Jesuits and the power of the Vatican is mentioned in this book. It's all over the place. It's all over the book. So I'm going to spend a couple minutes this evening going through some portions of William Cooper's Behold a Pale Horse. Just so you guys can go back to basics. You know, I mean, that I, I know this stuff, but I, it's troubling, truly troubling to see people on the internet seemingly getting dumber as the years progress. And the more facts that are actually out there and at our fingertips, it's as if more and more people are becoming blind to what is actually going on. And they just wanna ride the wave. They just wanna be a part of the group and it's whatever the media and the algorithms say goes because people just can't think outside the box they can't think for themselves so all it takes is a is an algorithm to control people's minds nowadays and it's it's quite sad 
So we need to get back to basics. We need to get back to reading. We need to get back to, first of all, reading our Bibles and doing that daily. And then getting back to reading books. I understand, yes, Netflix is convenient. Yes, I understand everything's on YouTube and you can get stuck in that YouTube rabbit hole for hours upon hours. I am guilty of this myself. But if you want to know what the, let's call it, what my secret to the success of, the successes that I've had in my research, it's reading. It's keeping my head, keeping my head in books, uh, always trying to read something new. And it's wonderful how some of the things that you come across in these old books that you will never see on the internet. So let's start. I'm not going to be reading this thing from beginning to end. Let's start here on page 84. <clears throat> Page 84 of Behold a Pale Horse by Bill Cooper. The CFR is a secret society in that it forbids the taking of notes or the publishing of minutes and its meetings. Any members who divulge the subject or any part of the conversation or talk or talk that took place during the meeting is terminated. The goal of the Council on Foreign Relations is a new world order. George Bush, that's George Bush Sr., is a member of the CFR. Knights of Malta play a powerful role in this scenario. In the 1930s, General Smedley Butler was recruited to help take over the White House. He was told that he was needed because of his general popularity with the military. General Butler blew the whistle and named several prominent Americans as part of the plot. At the top of the list was John J. Raskob, who was a founding member of the U.S. branch of the Knights of Malta. He was board chairman of the board for General Motors. He was, at the time, the U.S. treasurer of the Knights of Malta. Congressional hearings were held to investigate the plot, but none of those named, including Raskob, were ever called to testify, and nothing, nothing ever came of the hearings. Although you will find this in the congressional records, you will never find it at any in any history book anywhere. It is significant that the Iran Contra episode has many similarities to the 1930s plot. William Casey was a member of the Knights of Malta. William Casey, with the help of Vice President Bush, Ann Armstrong, and Ronald Reagan, caused the president's foreign intelligence advisory board to be emasculated so that Bush, Casey, and North and others could carry out their dirty deeds without oversight. They had also developed a plan to suspend the Constitution of the United States and were preparing to implement the plan when they were caught. These facts emerged from the hearings but were suppressed by the committee chairman, Senator Daniel Inouye of Hawaii. You must understand that tremendous power was involved in both attempts to overthrow the United States government. William Casey was the director of the CIA. He was a member of the CFR. Casey was a Knight of Malta. He was the head of Ronald Reagan's political campaign. He was the head of the Security and Exchange Commission. During the Nixon administration, he was head of the Export-Import Bank. And I also believe that William Casey was also close buddies with William F. Buckley from uh, Firing Line. And I believe that Casey was uh, Buckley's first lawyer when he, got, when he got that whole show started. Casey arranged financing for the Kalma River Truck Factory in the Soviet Union with 90% of the funds guaranteed or furnished by the U.S. taxpayer. This factory built military trucks and tank engines for the Soviet Army. It was, and may still be, the largest factory in the world and could produce more heavy trucks than all U.S. factories together. I believe Casey was murdered. Yeah, I believe he was killed in his kayak uh, one, one, one morning while out on uh, boating, I believe. 
The, Knight of, the Knights of Malta is a world organization with its threads weaving through business, banking, politics, the CIA, other intelligence organizations, P2, which is the P2 Lodge in Italy, Masonic Lodge, religion, education, law, military, think tanks, foundations, the United States Information Agency, the United Nations, and numerous other organizations. Now, let me just read that last paragraph. So just just so you can understand, Bill Cooper knew the power of the Knights of Malta. How is it that so many researchers out there don't understand the power that is held by the sovereign military order of Malta? Reading again, the Knights of Malta is a world organization with its threads weaving through business, banking, politics, the CIA, other intelligence organizations, religion, education, law, military, think tanks, foundations, the United States Information Agency, the United Nations, and numerous other organizations. They are not the oldest, but are one of the oldest branches of the order of the quest in existence. The world head of the Knights of Malta is elected for a life term with the approval of the Pope. The Knights of Malta have, have their own constitution and are sworn to work towards the establishment of a new world order. New, yeah, new world order. A new world order with the Pope at its head. Knights of Malta members are also powerful members of the CFR and the Trilateral Commission. Well, here we are coming up on our first break, guys. Join me in on the other side. This is Harrison Katz with Hounds of Diana. This is 24-7 World Radio, home of Eric John Phelps and Vatican Assassins. This is Brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Brother Nicholas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags amerikanische Zeit für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Dit is Bruder Nico. Ich bin hartelijk uitgenodigt um elke Dienstag um 2 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit Het Duitse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen en drie uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. This is Eric John Phelps. Please listen to my broadcast, The Eric John Phelps Show, as I preach the true gospel of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Defend the Protestant Reformation that birthed Western civilization and expose the counter-reformation of the Jesuit order seeking to make the Pope of Rome the universal monarch of the world. Join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on 247worldradio.com. You're listening to 24-7 World Radio, home of Eric John Phelps and Vatican Assassins. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hounds to Die on with your host, Harrison Katz. Continuing our reading from the book, Behold the Pale Horse, published by William Cooper in 1990. Going back to basics. Wilson, if you will remember, took... Oh, hold on. Let me start that over. 
The first UN, U.S. ambassador to the Vatican was William Wilson, a Knight of Malta. His appointment was probably illegal and, for a fact, was highly unethical. Wilson could not possibly have represented the U.S. when his allegiance was sworn to the Pope. Yeah, just like any other single member of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta who's in any kind of uh, 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 public service, any kind of governmental position, that man, whether he's a knight or a woman who she's a dame of Malta, their allegiance ultimately is not to the Constitution, it's to the Pope in Rome. Continuing, Wilson, if you will, will remember, took an unauthorized trip to Libya and met private, privately with Libyan officials at the time when travel to Libya had been banned by the president. President Ronald Reagan had called Gaddafi, quote, a mad dog, and made a few strong threats. The U.S. has been resolute in bombing Libya, even though civilians were killed. Following Wilson's trip, Gaddafi issued a press release stating that, quote, an American diplomat had been sent to reduce tensions with Libya, end quote. The State Department denied that any such thing had taken place. Ambassador Wilson closed his mouth and refused any comment. To this day, he has said nothing, even though his actions made a liar of the United States and embarrassed us worldwide. A clue to what was happening is the fact that while we had cut off Libya and even bombed them while traveling, while travel by U.S. citizens to Libya was forbidden, five huge oil conglomerates were, were filling their pockets dealing with Gaddafi. One of the companies was headed by J. Peter Grace, president of W.R. Grace. Eight members of the W.R. Grace Company are members of the Knights of Malta, including Peter R. Grace himself. But listen to that. Eight members of the W.R. Grace Company are members of the Knights of Malta. According to an article by Leslie Geld in the New York Times, administration officials had expressed concerns about Mr. Wilson's activities. These actions, they said, often seem to revolve around his contacts and interests in the oil business. Wilson should have been fired, but instead, nothing happened except that he and his wife attended a papal Easter mass and stood next to George Schultz and his wife. In diplomatic language, this indicated private approval of his actions. George Schultz, of course, is a member of the CFR, the Bohemian Club, and the Benchel, B Betchel, B E C H T E L, Betchel Corporation, all of which have close ties to the Order and the Knights of Malta, meaning the Jesuit Order. Wilson engaged in several other improprieties while during let me start that over Wilson engaged in several several other improprieties during his ambassadorship again in each case nothing happened finally he resigned later if you will remember President Reagan suffered a fall from a horse on William Wilson's ranch in Mexico do you seriously think that President Reagan would have visited Wilson's home in Mexico if he had not approved Wilson's actions while he was the U.S. ambassador to the Vatican? Knight of Malta Myron Taylor was President Roosevelt's envoy. Knight of Malta John McCone was President Kennedy's envoy, and he was also the director of the CIA during the early 1960s. A former mayor of New York City, Robert Wagner, was President Jimmy Cotter's envoy. Frank Shakespeare replaced William Wilson. Frank Shakespeare is a Knight of Malta, and so it goes. President Reagan spoke at the annual Knight of Malta dinner, and I believe he was also made a, a honorary member of, well, that is President Reagan was made an honorary member of the Knights of Malta after he reestablished di diplomatic uh, ties with the Vatican. I believe in 1984. The Knights of Malta all have, <clears throat> excuse me, 
the Knights of Malta all have diplomatic immunity. They can ship goods cross borders without paying duty or undergoing customs checks. Does that ring any bells? In any case, that is power. The Knights of Malta is held up by, by a backbone consisting of nobility. Nearly half of the 10,000 members belong to Europe's oldest and most powerful families. This cements the alliance between the Vatican and the, quote, black nobility. The black nobility is mostly the rich and powerful of Europe. The head of the black nobility is the family that can claim direct descendancy from the last Roman emperor. Maybe now you can see that things are beginning to fall in their proper place. Membership in the Knights of Malta entails obedience to one superior in the order, and ultimately to the Pope. That is, superiors to uh, the Knights of Malta entails obedience to one superior in, quote, the order, which is the Jesuit order. Therefore, a U.S. ambassador who is also a member of the Knights of Malta faces a conflict of interest. Why is this fact ignored? President Bush appointed Knight of Malta Thomas Melody, M-E-L-L-E-D-Y, Melody, to the post of U.S. ambassador to the Vatican. The Vatican has found, founded that Pope John Paul II Center for Prayer and Study for Peace, 1711 Ocean Avenue, Spring Lake, New Jersey, in a mansion overlooking the ocean. This mansion was given to the New York Archdiocese by the estate of Elmer Bobst, who died in 1978. He was a multimillionaire and chairman of the Warner Lambert Company. Richard Nixon was a frequent visitor. Directors of the center were Kurt Waldheim, former, General, former Secretary General of the United Nations and ex-Nazi war criminal, Cyrus Vance, who was the former Secretary of State under Carter and member of both the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission, Claire Booth Luce, who is a Dame of Malta, and J. Peter Grace of W.R. Grace & Company, who is the head of the Knights of Malta in the U.S. This center, which is the John Pope John Paul II Center for Prayer and Study for Peace, I know it's a long name, this center was set up by the Vatican as part of the Pope's new peace plan, which will bring the world together. The center has two roles. One, educate Catholics and their children to accept the new world order. And two, listen closely, provide residence for the World Peace Solution Computer and an ongoing study for peaceful solutions to any future problems which may endanger world peace. The computer is hooked to the world capitals via satellite. All nations have agreed to relinquish sovereignty to the Pope and submit future problems to the computer for solutions. Now, any of you long-term listeners to the Hounds of Diana will remember a broadcast that I did uh, many, many weeks ago, probably maybe maybe the first, somewhere like in the first 10 shows I did, where I went and found the an actual newspaper article that describes this very same thing that William Cooper printed in his book about this Pope John, John Paul II, Center for Pair, Center for prayer and study for peace this whole little center okay with its little computer with its little supercomputer that's hooked up to uh that's hooked in with the united nations so basically they can show both sides the different outcomes of, of potential uh war scenarios this is all real again you need to get a copy of this book, Behold the Pale Horse by William Cooper. It's got a lot of great facts in it. Some of them are hard to actually track down, but nonetheless, what he put in this book is true. 
Of course, the, this will not go into effect until the New World Order is publicly announced. I believe that the New World Order was born in secrecy on January 19th, 1989. And now you know. Acquaint yourself anew with the teachings of Jesus. Compare his teachings with the tenets of the Illuminati or the Vatican, and then compare it with the following. The Vatican has stated at various times that, quote, the Pope is for total disarmament. The Pope is for elimination of the sovereignty of the nation states. The Pope is also stating that property rights are not to be considered true property rights. The Pope believes that only the Vatican knows what is right for man. In the early 1940s, the, RG, the IG Farben Chemical Company employed a Polish salesman who sold cyanide to the Nazis for use in their Auschwitz death camp in Poland. The same salesman also worked as a chemist in the manufacture of the poison gas. This same cyanide gas, along with Zyklon B and Malathion, was used to exterminate millions of Jews and other groups by the Nazis. Their bodies were then burned to ash in the ovens. After the war, the salesman, fearing for his life, joined the Catholic Church and was ordained a priest in 1946. One of his closest friends was Dr. Wolf Sismunez, name spelt W-O-L-F, S-Z-M-U-N-E-S-S, -S, Dr. Wolf Zmunez. Anybody who's looking into vaccination science needs to be aware of this man. He is the mastermind behind the November 1978 to October 1979 and March 1980 to October 1981 experimental hepatitis B vaccine trials conducted by the Center for Disease Control in New York, San Francisco, and four other American cities. Okay, this doctor who was behind that hepatitis B vaccine, Dr. Wolf Smunez, went, was not only went to college with young uh, uh, Carol Wojtyla, aka Pope John Paul II, but they shared, they were roommates. They were roommates, okay, and very close friends. Dr. Wolf Zmunez. All right, continuing on. On July 21st, 1773, now, again, this is still all coming from Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. On July 21st, 1773, Pope Clement XIV, quote, forever annulled and extinguished, extinguished the Jesuit order, unquote. France, Spain, and Portugal had independently come to realize that the Jesuits were meddling in the affairs of the state and were therefore enemies of the government. The Pope's action was a re response to pressure applied by the monarchies. King Joseph of Portugal signed a decree, quote, by which the Jesuits were denounced as traitors, rebels, and enemies to the realm. Amen and hallelujah. Pope Pius VII, in August 1814, reinstated the Jesuits to all their former rights and privileges. Ex-President John Adams wrote to his successor, Thomas Jefferson, quote, I do not like the reappearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth, it is this society, end quote. Jefferson replied, quote, like you, I disapprove of the restoration of the Jesuits, for it means a step backwards from light into darkness, end quote. The Jesuits are still in trouble today as they have been throughout their existence. On February 28, 1982, Pope John Paul II told the Jesuits to, quote, keep clear of politics and honor Roman Catholic tradition, end quote. U.S. News and World 
and World Report stated that the Jesuits had indeed meddled in the affairs of nations. The article stated, quote, Jesuits have played leading roles in Nicaragua's Sandista Revolution. Some Jesuits have joined communist parties. One priest in El Salvador has claimed that his order is working for the advancement of Marxism and revolution, not for God. Jesuits have joined left-wing rebel movements in Central America and the Philippines and have advocated a melding of Marxism and Roman Catholicism in what they call, quote, liberation theology. When the United States wanted to employ the nastiest forms of the Hague Kissinger, all right, uh, uh, Hague was a Knight of Malta, Hague Kissinger depopulation policy in Central America, it was the Jesuits who organized and prodded the people into civil war. Wherever the Jesuits go, revolution quickly follows. I am always sad when I see or hear of people being hurt, but according to my research, the Jesuit priests murdered in Central America probably deserved it. Well, can't be mad at William Cooper for that. Not at all. And that was just from chapter two. All that, all that, what we just went over. Those were, and that wasn't even all of chapter two. Those were just excerpts from chapter two. And continuing on, which I will not get into. But in the very next chapter, chapter three of Behold the Pale Horse, he go he went ahead and printed the whole in its entirety the secret oath of the Jesuit fourth vow. Right there in chapter three of William Cooper's Behold the Pale Horse. Join me on the other side here at the Hounds of Diana. You're listening to Your Source for the Truth. This is 24-7 World Radio. This is Eric John Phelps. Please listen to my broadcast, The Eric John Phelps Show, as I preach the true gospel of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, defend the Protestant Reformation that birthed Western civilization, and expose the counter-reformation of the Jesuit order seeking to make the Pope of Rome the universal monarch of the world. Join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on 247worldradio.com. This is Brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Brother Nicholas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags, amerikanische Zeit, für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Das ist Bruder Nico. Ich bin Hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om 2 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Duitse Bijbel waarheidsuur te volgen en 3 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbel waarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. This is 24-7 World Radio, your source for the truth. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hounds of Diana. This is the last, last leg here, last 20 minutes or so. And I'm just going to keep on reading. I'm just going to keep on reading. Because I really, again, going back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the show, 
we just we, we aren't reading enough guys and that's the that's the fact of the matter we're too distracted we need to get our heads back in these books we need to get our heads back in these books and we need to start seeking to put more pieces to the puzzle together you know so many times we think well <laughs> i mean just speaking for me personally from my own personal experience i think so many times well i know everything i know that already come on now i mean i've done you know 30 so odd shows uh this is be number 32 and every every week or so i'm talking about something new i'm bringing out some some new facts some new research you know and uh it's real easy just to sit back and think that i can just you know rest on my laurels and think that well i've done i've done my part when in fact there is still so much more to do there is still so much more to learn and there is still so much more to cover now before we continue on reading uh in our book here behold a pale horse by william cooper i want to go back and touch on something that i had mentioned earlier uh earlier in the show speaking of this pope john paul ii the center for prayer and study for peace this uh this this supercomputer that they built and put in and ha to to house inside this this uh papacy and jesuit run center in order to uh further control the uh decisions of the different uh sovereign nations of the world one thing i do want to mention here talking about computers talking about supercomputers and this kind of touches on something i was speaking on last week the future of computing. This might throw a lot of people off, but it's the truth. The future of our computing is not, it's not quantum computing. It's not. Now I know, I know before you start anybody send, don't please don't send me any emails about quantum computers. Don't send me any videos trust me i've probably seen them your articles i've probably read them and just let me give you a little piece of advice the reason why it will never be able to happen or to be achieved the way that they want it to be achieved have to have real real quantum computers is simply this there is no such thing no such thing as quantum superposition it's that easy there's no such thing as quantum superposition then therefore these quantum computers can never achieve quantum superposition within their you know within the workings mechanical workings and elements of their what they call qubits now so when thinking about this large, it had to be massive computer, supercomputer that they housed at this Pope John Paul II Center for Prayer and Study for Peace. If they still in fact do have this thing up and running, which it may still be possible, it could be considered an old relic of the Cold War. But whatever it was, whatever it may be, and whatever, any kind of supercomputers AI controlled technology in the future or uh, computers that are power the AI of the future they're not going to be quantum computers more than likely they are going to be um, simulated neural networks much like patterned after our very own brains and that's how they're going to have to build these computers. They're going to have to mimic life in order to get the lifelike results of artificial intelligence that they seek. They're not going to be able to do it using any hocus pocus quantum computing. It just don't work. Just like quantum mechanics. It just don't work. Okay. Now that I'm done ranting about quantum computing back to our book behold the pale horse by william cooper <clears throat> following world war ii something happened that was 
to have tremendous significance for the future of all mankind. The intellectuals took note of this happening and brought it to the attention of the world power elites. The elites were severely shaken by the predicted repercussions of this event. They were, t they were told that by, that by or shortly after the year 2000, the total collapse of civilization as we know it and the possible extinction of the human race could occur. It could occur, that is, if we did not destroy the Earth with nuclear weapons before then. They were told that the only things that could stop these predicted events would be severe cutbacks of human population, the cessation or retardation of technological and economic growth, the elimination of meat in the human diet, strict control of future human reproduction, a total commitment to preserving the environment, colonization of space, and a paradigm shift in the evolutionary consciousness of man. Those in power immediately formed an alliance to set things, to set about bringing the recommended changes to fruition through propaganda, mind control, and other manipulation of the masses. The Illuminati's prayers had been answered. What was this event that caused so much consternation and changed forever the future of the world? Well, millions of soldiers returned home from war. The soldiers found lonely, eager women waiting for them. The greatest coupling of, in human history had taken place. The result was everyone born between 1941 and 1955 and the children that they would eventually produce, also known as the baby boomers. It was me, you, and everyone who lives today. It was the great worldwide baby boom. It was the culmination of man's efforts to survive throughout history. It was modern medicine, better diets, heat, winter, uh, heat in the winter, pure running water, and proper disposal of sewage. It was the point in history when the birth rate so exceeded the death rate that the world's population doubled between 1957 and 1990. It was the most wonderful time in, human, in the history of the world, but it was also the worst. It signaled the end of man's most precious achievement. An alliance of all the powers on earth, open and hidden, decided that individual freedoms could no longer be tolerated in the interest of the preservation of the human race. They believed the common man could not be trusted. What had been the unfulfilled dream of many individual groups became reality by the concentration of power in the alliance known as the Bilderberg Group. What had been impossible before was now promised the new world order was now promised by the new world order that so many had envisioned was now a certainty the first study was made during world war ii to determine the impact of returning soldiers upon the economy the results mobilized the ruling elite the second secret study was conducted in 1957 by scientists meeting in huntsville alabama alabama it confirmed the result of the first the conclusion was that civilizations as we know it would collapse shortly after the year 2000 unless the population was seriously curtailed. The study expressed a concern that since atomic weapons existed, they would ultimately be used. Total worldwide disarmament was urged. Again, all this is we've gone over in other broadcasts, though I don't agree with many, with some of uh, William Cooper's conclusions, a lot of his information is really good. But again, there's no such thing as global nuclear war. There's no such thing as uh, total nuclear destruction. That These things will never take place. Total worldwide disarmament was urged. Congress adopted the disarmament plan and created the U.S. Disarmament Agency. President Dwight D. Eisenhower had this to say in 1957, quote, as a result of the lowered infant mortality, longer lives, and the accelerating conquest of famine, there is underway a population explosion that's so incredibly, incredibly great 
that in little more than another generation, the population of the world is expected to, to double. The, the third study was made by the Club of Rome, ending in 1968, to determine the limits of growth. The result was the same. The Club of Rome was commissioned to develop a computer model of the world so as to predict the outcome of excuse me the outcome of corrections made to social and economic structures by the elect the club of rome was also asked to develop a computer model of the new world order both tasks were accomplished studies were done to determine a method to arrest the population explosion before the point of no return would be reached it was determined that an in immediate attack on the problem would involve two points of intervention. The first was to lower the birth rate. The second was to increase the death rate. Pretty simple. Straightforward, right? Lower the birth rate, increase the death rate. Lower the birth rate, increase the death rate. To lower the birth rate, programs were put in, several programs were put into motion. The first was develop was the, the development of positive birth control methods using mechanical, whether diaphragm or diaphragm or condom, chemical, which are foam or birth control pills, and medical, which is sterilization, abortion, and hysterectomy procedures. These were developed and implemented. The women's liberation movement was started with the demand for free abortions using quote pro-choice as its rallying rallying cry. Zero population growth became a hot subject at cocktail parties. Individual freedom, quote, the heat of the moment, religion, and the old blue laws sabotaged these efforts. And while zero population growth became a reality in some areas, population increased rapidly in others. The only alternative left to the world's ruling elite was to increase the death rate. This was a difficult thing to do, as no one wanted to pick people out of a crowd and line them up for execution, at least, the, at least not openly. They're not doing that yet. Neither did they relish in the possible consequences of an enraged public upon discovering that they were being systematically murdered. Of course, a very short but very deadly global war using nuclear weapons upon select population con concentrations was contemplated, and to tell the truth, was not ruled out. The fact that such a population control was even contemplated confirmed the worst fears of those who had participated in the 1957 study. War was put on the back burner to simmer, but may become a reality. In the meantime, something else had to be done that would absolve the decision makers of guilt and place the blame on those who did not lead clean lives. Now, listen, li listen to this last sentence. In the meantime, something else had to be done that would absolve the decision makers of guilt and place the blame on those who did not clean, who did not lead clean lives. Something that could be blamed upon Mother Nature. What was needed was a bubonic plague or some other horrible but natural, quote-unquote, natural disease. The answers came from Rome. Several top-secret recommendations were made by Dr. Aurelio Pecci of the Club of Rome. He advocated that a plague be introduced that would have the same effect as the famous Black Death of History. The chief recommendation was to develop a microbe that would attack the autoimmune system and thus render the development of a vaccine impossible. The orders were given to develop the microbe and develop a prophylactic and a cure. The microbe would be used against the general population and would be introduced by vaccine. The prophylactic was to be used by the ruling elite. The cure will be administered to the survivors when it's decided that enough, enough people have died. The cure will be announced as newly developed when in fact it has existed from the beginning. This plan is part of Global 2000. The prophylactic and the cure are suppressed. Now I believe 
he goes on to describe how yep yep in 19 in the 19 year uh, fiscal year 1969 the DOD included 10 million dollars in their budget and it's talked about during the testimony of the Senate committee and this is the supposed to be one of the microbes that they were talking about for research into population control and to control the uh, the results if you would of overpopulation and this turned out to be the what has later been known or come to be known as the AIDS virus that's right you can find tucked away in the 1969 uh, budget for the DOD you can find them talking about them giving ten million dollars to do experiments to find some kind to, to work on this very same exact kind of microbe very chilling stuff very chilling stuff especially when you think about what's been going on in the world in the last two years so again you need to get a copy of this book Behold the Pale Horse by William Cooper and hopefully next week I'm going to start reading another basic book because it's time we got back to the basics people time we got back to the basics thank you so much for listening this has been another hour here at 24-7 worldradio.com I'm your host Harrison Katz join me next week on the Hounds of Diana God bless